Hello everyone and welcome to a new Sega Mega Drive game dev tutorial. In the previous lesson we discussed how to take graphics from other systems, for example from the Super Nintendo and, and Playstation and how to convert them onto the Mega Drive. Since each console and arcade board and computer tends to use a different resolution I thought now would be a good time to discuss the Mega Drive's own resolution modes. The first of these and by far the most common is the H40 mode. It gets its name from the fact that it can display 40 tiles horizontally, each tile being 8x8 pixels so the horizontal resolution is 320 and the vertical resolution is 224. It can display 80 hardware sprites on screen at the same time per frame as well as 20 per horizontal line. If a game at any point exceeds these limits then you'll start to see some sprites flicker. The second type of resolution the Mega Drive can display is the H32 mode which can display 32 tiles horizontally. That gives a screen width of 256 pixels and it can display 64 sprites per frame or 16 per horizontal line. Implementing this at a very basic level within SGDK is actually very straightforward so before we get into why you would choose one resolution mode or the other, over the other, let's go to the programming side first. If you don't specify to SGDK which horizontal mode you want to use then it will simply default to H40 mode. If you wanted to use H32 mode instead to make 256 horizontal pixels then we're going to have to tell it to do that. Thankfully this only takes one single line of code and we're going to write that line in between where it says main and well. Now if you type in VDP underscore and then write 256, the IntelliSense should uh, should guess which one you want to use which is this one here. It's VDP underscore set screen width 256. Just do the open brackets, we don't need to put any information and then we put the semicolon. And believe it or not that's all there is to it so we just need to save and compile now and let's see what it looks like. On the left hand side we have the regular H40 mode so that's 320 pixels wide and on the right hand side we have the H32 mode which is 256 pixels wide. The Super Nintendo original was of course 256 pixels wide so the one on the right hand side should look closer to that than the one on the left but I think they both look fine. One thing you may have noticed that is that the one on the right hand side the H3, uh, H32 mode is moving scrolling a bit faster than the one on the left. Uh, of course you can see here that the code's the same, we're just adding one pixel per frame but because there are a few pixels on the screen for the H32 mode it looks like it's scrolling faster because there's fewer pixels to scroll through on the screen. We can also specifically tell SGDK to use the H40 mode so we simply say VDP underscore set screen width 320 open brackets again and the semicolon. Now you may be wondering what's the point of this since the SGDK will automatically default to three, uh, H40 mode uh, if you don't put anything in. Well the point is you can actually change resolutions throughout your game so for example some games such as Golden X the main uh, title screen will be in low resolution mode the H32 mode whereas the game itself is in the higher resolution H40 mode. If I were to guess why they chose the lower resolution mode for the title screen I would probably say that they maybe want to save some ROM space because after all if you fill a, a screen with tiles in the lower resolution mode you need fewer tiles in the higher res resolution mode so you should be able to depending on how you create the image you should be able to save maybe some ROM space you don't need so many unique tiles. While the vast majority of Mega Drive games did use the H40 resolution mode now let's take a look at which games did use the low resolution mode and why they chose to do so and looking at that may help us in making uh, decisions about which resolution mode to use in our own games too. Thankfully someone by the name of Firebrand X has compiled a list of all the games that use the low resolution mode and in what areas they use it. Just slowly going down the list and looking at the different titles it makes some interesting reading so you can see that a lot of them they use maybe it's just a Sega logo in the uh, higher resolution mode and the rest of the games in the lower resolution mode. Some of them use the title screen in the higher resolution mode in contrast to uh, Golden Axe for example Chi Chi's Pro Challenge Golf here. Probably the most common reason for using the lower resolution mode is to have ports from other systems which are also in that lower resolution so you see lots of Konami games for example uh, Sunset Riders and also Lethal Enforcers here the that nice gun game which I assume we're in the lower resolution mode to begin with in 256 horizontal pixels. You also have lots of EA Sports games for example the NHL games here. However these aren't all ports and you, you for example have some games, original games from, from Sega for example Shining Force 1 and 2 so that's a rather interesting choice that they chose to go for the low resolution mode for that one. 
maybe of all the, the big portraits they have of the characters and so on they just wanted to save ROM space but if anyone else has any other ideas of why they chose that lower resolution uh, mode for this game then please leave a comment in the section below. If we head back to the list we can see virtual racing now i'm not sure what the case was with this particular game since it used the svp chip but for any game which uses 3d on the mega drive you're probably going to be the graphics are going to be rendered probably on the cpu you're probably going to use software rendering rather than the traditional tile system that the the hardware has so in those particular circumstances using the lower resolution might take some load off the cpu as you have fewer pixels on the screen to to render if we take a look at this game, Zero Tolerance for the Mega Drive, it's obviously using a very impressive 3D engine for the system. Now, the, you can see that they've kept the frame rate up by using a very small gameplay window. The rest of the, win the, rest of the screen is taken up by the portrait of the character and so on. Now, this actually, assumes this uses the high resolution mode since it's not on the list we just looked at. But if they use the low resolution mode, they might have been able to make maybe the, the playable screen area a little bit bigger. For those of you interested in doing some ports of games from other systems, uh, you don't necessarily have to follow the resolution of the original. So you can see from my own project, Castlevania Symphony of the Night for the Mega Drive, I've chosen to use the regular H40 resolution mode. Changing a game between the higher and low resolution mode is a bit more difficult than I've presented in this lesson here. So I've shown you the basics, but when we come to do, for example, the camera that follows the game character about, some variables that have to change, and also just the even the level design has to change. So in, in my own game, if I can introduce a, an option to use a low resolution mode, then I will do so if it's not too much, too much work. But um, I'm definitely going to go ahead with the high resolution mode for now. Which resolution mode you choose for your own game is, is your choice, of course. I think is I think both choices have merits. Um, I like to be able to use more sprites in the screen at the same time. Plus, I also, I quite like the way it looks. For example, Castlevania here, I think the graphical assets transfer well to the higher resolution mode. And this also gives people the option of playing the game in almost like a widescreen mode. So, uh, like many people, I generally don't like to stretch any Mega Drive games to fit a, a, a widescreen aspect ratio. But in this case, because I'm using the higher resolution mode with the original assets, when you do stretch it to either fit an emulator on a screen on emulator or a, a widescreen CRT, the results look pretty good because it, it looks more similar to the PlayStation original but of course you also get the added benefit of being able to see more of the screen. The choice of which resolution mode to use becomes even more complex when you're dealing with a, a different console for example the Game Boy Advance here which has a resolution of 240 by 160 pixels. The footage you're seeing here is Area of Sorrow playing on the Mega Drive. It's not by me, it's by a long-term view of the channel called Daniel. And I'll link his channel in the description so you can have a look at his other projects too. If you look closely at some of the graphics and the level design for Area of Sorrow, you can see that it presents some challenges to convert it to the Mega Drive. So the height of this section, for example, is 160 pixels. But of course, the Mega Drive, the uh, vertical resolution is 224. So you have either have these black bars at the top or bottom, or maybe you can you can stretch the image, or you have to redraw it. But redrawing is more difficult. And while we're at it, let's take a look at the colors as well. So as you can see, the there's going to be a, a big change with this game in terms of making the colors fit the Mega Drive color palette, both in terms of the color depth as well as the number of uh, colors on screen at the same time. And since I mentioned stretching the image, let's just take a quick look at that now. So in a sprite, and as you're about to see, it's not the most elegant solution. I don't think it looks that, that great. Now, I've just stretched it vertically here. Obviously, you probably want to stretch it a bit horizontally too, so that the actual the ratio stays the same as before. But even just doing this quick experiment, you can see it looks a bit stretched. And even more importantly, it makes the, the actual graphics go out of sync with the 8x8 holes uh, 8 by 8 pixel tiles uh, sync so if they should match up it should fit neatly into 8 by 8 tiles to fit into VRAM as well as do the level collision and as soon as you start stretching things it can be if you're not careful it can be very difficult so for example with with this area of sorrow I think probably stretching probably wouldn't be a great idea for either the sprites or the the levels too you're probably gonna have to maybe just change the level design a bit or you can add some actual tiles here and there to, to make up for the space but it's definitely gonna take a lot of work but I know Daniel's working on lots of different projects so don't put pressure on him he's not working full-time on this particular project it's just some fun experimentation I 
I hope this video has been informative both in letting you know how to implement different resolution modes in SGDK as well as just to give you general information of the benefits and drawbacks of each and which resolution mode you might like to use in different situations. For homework for everyone I'll leave this video in the video description from Displays Gamers so I definitely recommend you check it out to learn a bit more about the Mega Drive's resolution modes. Okay so I think that just about wraps things up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in this kind of content then please subscribe to the channel. I'm interested in this. And if you want to support the channel further I have a Patreon account. You won't go unrewarded. And until next time. Farewell.